So you're all ready to start your herbal journey, but you have no idea where to get these herbs from. Catnip and yarrow, where do you find them? So you get on your computer, you look online and you're searching and you find pages upon pages of sources. But how do you know if they're any good? Hello, my name is Amanda and I'm from The Wild Herbal and today I'm going to teach you what to look for when you're trying to find online sources for your herbs and the top couple places that I like to source my herbs from. So the first thing that you're going to look for on a website is where is the herb coming from? It's sometimes labeled on their origin and is it coming from China? Is it coming from California? where they're sourcing it from, if it's international or local. Second thing you want to look for is how is it being sourced? Is it being ethically sourced? There are several hundred herbs that some are on the endangered list, some are on the almost endangered list, and so you kind of want to make sure that the company that you're buying for is not just going into a country and eliminating the herb by not being very careful about how they actually forage the herb. So it's something you want to look into is their ethics. Are they making sure that they're only taking, you know, one or two plants out of 10? Or are they going and they're also helping to plant those plants that they are taking as well. So if they're taking a couple plants and they're also helping to reproduce a couple plants at the same time so that it keeps the continual cycle and we don't have a fluctuation of herbs that were once abundant and then they're endangered because of overuse. So that's the second thing you want to look for. The third thing you want to look for is how is it produced? Is it produced on a commercial farm where they're being sprayed with pesticides? Is it produced organically where they have a different set of pesticides but are less toxic? Or is it wild crafted? And wild crafted typically means that they are paying a local farmer or somebody that has herbal knowledge or botanist knowledge. Botanists will go into a field and that they're foraging from the wild herbs that are from that region. And so wildcraft is an, is an excellent source because an herb is already growing in its local environment. And so it has everything that it needs and it's not becoming an invasive species somewhere else. So those are the top four things to look for. Um, the fifth thing what I would add is if you can figure out how they're storing herbs. Is it sitting in a plastic bag in a warehouse that's not temperature controlled? Is it, has it been sitting for a really long time? And so you're going to know that when you first, when you get your first batch of herbs because you're going to open up a bag and if your herb is brown and it's a leaf and it's supposed to be green, that's not really a good sign. That means that it's too old. And if you open your herb package and take a good smell, it should have a scent. It should have a strong scent. And if it doesn't have a scent, that's a sign that you have an old herb. So that is something to look for when it actually arrives. But to actually find that out on the website, it would be nice if you could actually look on the herb label on the website and see if there's a pick date. And you can see, well, how long ago has it been picked? Um, some Mountain Rose has little um, you little codes that you can scan and it tells you that you can actually contact the grower and you can find more about your lot number so you know exactly how old that herb is. So that is another thing to look for when you're buying online. There are a lot of online sources. I don't necessarily know the best online sources. I think that's gonna be a little bit different for every person. But for me personally, my top source that I buy herbs from is Mountain Rose. They are a fairly small company, but they have a very wide variety of herbs. They're all organic, they're all wild crafted. All company and they're always looking for ways to for herbs that are on the endangered list. They're very careful with those herbs and they're always looking for different ways that they can source those, whether it's finding a grower that they can try to mimic different growing conditions to try to grow that herb um, more locally, but they're always looking for ways to help the herbal and the plant life. And I really appreciate that. I appreciate different things that they stand for. They're a really great company. Their customer service is amazing. The only downfall I have with Mountain Rose is that sometimes their shipping 
depending on what type of year you're buying from, can be a little bit slow. So if you're ordering in the spring, which I feel like they must have a lot of orders coming in the spring. So when you order like February, between February and April, you typically have to wait two to three weeks for your shipment to come in, or at least maybe that's just me because I order a lot from them. Um, I like that their herbs are organic or wild crafted. I like that I can scan the QC the code on the back and then I can find out exactly where it's grown. There's a lot number that I can look up with that code as well and I can find out a little bit more about that specific lot. So if there's an issue with one of my tinctures, I can go right back to what I was using with this herb. So I really love this company. They're great, very high quality products and I highly recommend them. The second source is not necessarily an easy source. It would be to grow your own. And I also get my herbs, my seeds from Mountain Rose because it's easy, because I'm already ordering a lot of herbs from them. And the ones that I'm going to grow, I get their seeds because their seeds are also very well done. They're not hybrids of anything. I know exactly what species I'm getting as medicinal. So I really like that. But another thing is to have your own garden. If you're interested when you're first starting herbalism, it's really easy to maybe just find 10 herbs that maybe are varied. You want an herb for the immune system, you want an herb for the kidney, you want an herb for the heart, or you want an herb um, for your nervous system and get maybe a couple different herbs and grow those 10 herbs and get really familiar with using and growing those herbs. And then you can branch out to other things because a lot of herbs, are interchangeable and they can do a lot of the same things. So just getting to know a couple herbs, you can do a lot with just a couple herbs and you can treat most things with just a few of the herbs that you have. So I always suggest that having your own medicinal herb garden is a great choice. If you're a busy mom, I'm a mom of five, I have a newborn and I'm very busy all the time. So I am not the best at keeping up with my herb garden right now. I've been much better in the past, but now it is not my forte and I let it die quite a bit. So it's not it's something I'm trying again with my kids this year. We're planting a couple on our porch and to see if we can help those to grow. But for the most part, I do order a lot of my herbs through Mountain Rose and also through my third source. We do a lot of foraging and I love foraging. I think it's really fun. I am not extremely confident when it comes to looking at um, I have these herb cards, looking at an herb card or looking at a plant and even reading what it's supposed to look like and then trying to go and find it. I'm not very confident in that. So if that's something that you really are interested in and I think it's, I mean, it's a free way to get herbs and that, which is awesome, free medicine. But I would definitely suggest that you look in your area for herb walks that you can do. A lot of people, a lot of herbalists or botanists or a naturalist, they'll do herb walks with you and they're really fun. So I've done a couple herb walks in my area and every time I learn a different plant. And I love when you have an herbalist that can take you by the hand, you can touch the plant, you can feel the plant, you can know exactly what it is you're looking for and you're not trying to look at a picture and trying to figure out, man, I don't know, is that the plant? Okay, that has, it can just, it can be confusing. And there's some herbs that have poisonous lookalikes. So there's ones that you kind of want to be careful with. So I definitely recommend taking a couple walks, herb walks in your area with a naturalist or another herbalist and figuring out what grows. Because I'm sure a lot of just the basic herbs that you're going to need for your herbal medicine is going to be growing in your own backyard. So that is definitely my third and most favorite way to get my herbal supply is through foraging. And so this is an herbless herb walk is my number one resource of foraging. But once you learn, I love these herb cards. They're from Nature's Medicine. They have awesome facts on them. They have exactly what part of the plant is edible, what plant you're gonna be foraging for. It has exactly the botanical description of the plants. And if you don't know botany or you missed that in school somehow, they also have in their set, they have the different flower shape. shape is. You can look on the cards in and of itself and it tells you exactly what shape you're looking for. It tells you the different shapes of the leaves. It tells you the different types of fruit and what they're called. So not only are you learning to forage and find plants, you're also getting a really awesome botany lesson. So that has helped me a lot with my kids because they are very, it's called nature's medicine chest and they're plant identification cards. 
They're very durable and we take these when we go on hikes and we try to identify different things that we come across that I kind of know, or maybe that, you know, it's in the family of you know, the mint family. So I can try to find maybe if that's an herb or something. So I love these cards. They're definitely my top resource. Another resource that we found this year is really cool. It's called Foraging and Feasting by Dinah Falcone. And it is awesome. I absolutely love this book. It has beautiful pictures. And I love it also because not only does it have beautiful pictures, but it shows you what the plant looks like in every single season. And I think that's really important because a plant that you find in the spring is going to look totally different in the fall. And fall plants look totally different in the winter. So I feel like it's really awesome that they have the different seasons of what you're looking for in a plant. And then not only that, but on the bottom it has the habitat. So whether you're going to find it by a, by a lake or by a pond or whether you're going to find it on a roadside, what type of soil it's going to grow in. Um, it also has culinary uses, which I love. She had in the back of her book so many recipes. My kids and I are learning foraging and botany this year, and we are absolutely loving this resource. The fourth place that you can try to find herbs is a local herb shop around you. Unfortunately, in my area, I don't have a local herb shop. The only herb shop we have, they order herbs from Mountain Rose. So... I just kind of skip the middleman in that area unless I have a herb that I can't find a mountain rose that maybe they have in stock, I can do that. But I don't really have anyone local that grows the herbs that I'm using. And so that's not an option for me, but maybe in your area, you do have a local place. So maybe a local farmer or someone that you could try to find, that would be an awesome source if you can find it. And the fifth source, and my least favorite is Amazon. Now this last herb order that I did in the spring, I had a mountain rose that was out of several of the herbs that I needed. I waited for a couple of weeks. They weren't coming in stock and I needed to order. So I had to find a different source for my herbs. So I found on Amazon the Star Wars Botanicals, which they have a website and you can order from their website. And they seem to be very good quality herbs. They smelled really good when I opened them. They seemed very fresh. They are organic as well. Um, this one is from Albania. I know a lot of their herbs in the past, it could be different now, were from China. And I, unless it's ginseng or a Chinese herb, I typically don't like buying my herbs from China because they don't necessarily have the best farming practices. So I do try to avoid that unless it's a specific Chinese herb that I know it's probably, it grows better there than it would grow here. But it, they seem to be a pretty good herb company. And then another one I ordered from Amazon is called Organic Way, and that's the go-to cola that I bought, and it's from Sri Lanka. And so it's also USDA Organic. I don't know a whole lot about this company, but the only thing I do suggest with Amazon is there is a lot of herbal fraud on Amazon, like with the medicines and capsules. I would definitely suggest that when you are going on Amazon, you want to make sure that underneath the herb where you're trapped, where it says we're the seller, that the seller is Star West Botanicals or Organic Way or whatever is the name of the herb company that is on the package, it needs to match the seller's name because there have been a, there has been a lot of capsule fraud. So if you go and order, you know, some great herbal capsules of echinacea, and people are actually taking those capsules and dumping out all the echinacea and putting sawdust and other things in them that is not genuine and it's not real and then people take the herbal capsules and they're like oh these don't work and really it's not that it's the herb that doesn't work because they never even had a genuine product and so that happens quite frequently on amazon so it definitely is a place and it's an easy place to get stuff from but please make sure that you're buying from the seller so that you're not getting junk and that you're not putting junk into your herbal formula and you go through the whole process of making this amazing tincture and then it is ineffective because it really wasn't a very good product to begin with. I would hate for that to happen for you. But those are definitely my top five places to get herbs from. So that would be Mountain Rose. The second is to grow your own. The third is to forage, to find herb walks in your area and to learn what grows in your area. The fourth is a local herb store, and the fifth is Amazon if you absolutely need to. 
Thank you for watching. I can't wait to hear what you guys are making and what you are creating in your kitchens. Goodbye.